Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh here from Keep It Techie, where I help people learn Linux and get into the tech field one command at a time. And today we're checking out a really interesting privacy tool called Carburetor. And if you've ever wished you could browse the internet without being tracked or fingerprinted, this one's worth your attention. Carburetor basically gives you system-wide tour routing. So not just your web browser, but your entire Linux system can use encrypted Tor connections without complicated setup. And today I wanted to cover what it is, how it works. And of course, I'll walk you through installing it and using it on Ubuntu 24.04. But before we jump in, do me a quick favor, go down and hit that like button. If you're learning something new and subscribe to the channel, if you want more Linux tutorials and privacy tools like this one, it really helps the channel grow and keeps the content rolling. All right, let's get into it. So I'm at tractor.frama.io. And of course I'll have a link down in the description of the video, but this is how you get to Corporator. And they also have another application called Tractor, which is a command line tool that allows you to connect to the Tor network as well. But Corporator is the one I wanna focus on. So Corporator is an open source privacy app built for Linux. It's designed to route all your system traffic through the network, giving you anonymity across all your apps not just your web browser. Now, most people are familiar with the Tor browser, which protects your web activity, but it doesn't cover things like email clients, command line tools, or system updates. Well, Carbonator actually solves that by running a local proxy in the background. It's also lightweight, graphical, and can be turned on and off with a single click. It's also super cool because it's built with GNOME in mind. So it integrates really nicely in Ubuntu and other GTK based desktop environments. Now let's talk about why you might want to use this. In 2025, online tracking is everywhere. Websites, ISPs, apps, and even government level surveillance systems or all collecting data. And while VPNs are great for encrypting traffic and hiding your IPs, they usually require you to trust the VPN provider. On the other hand, is decentralized. Your traffic hops through multiple random servers called relays before reaching the destination. That makes it extremely difficult to trace back to you and makes the whole process easy. You don't have to install or configure Tor manually, write SOC, proxy settings or edit configuration files is basically a one click privacy switch. And if you're into journalism, cybersecurity, research, or just privacy, Carbonator is a fantastic tool to have on your Linux system. Now let's hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through how to get this thing set up. What's up y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techie. Peace. All right, so I'm connected to my YouTube Ubuntu virtual machine. This is 24.04. And let me go down and open up a terminal right fast. Because one of the first things you want to do whenever you're installing any new piece of software is update your system. So let's go down and run our updates. And this is Ubuntu 24.04. I know it says Ubuntu or 22. But that's only because I did an upgrade on this one from 22.04 to 24.04. So just ignore the name. But this is a 24.04 sudo and then apps updates. You want to run your updates to refresh the repositories and all that good stuff on the system. And I believe this system is up to date. I believe it may have some old packages on here or something that needs to be removed, but it should be up to date. All right, cool. So we are updated. It says nine packages can be upgraded, but if let's see if we run the upgrade command, if it does anything, now it says the following packages were automatically installed and are no longer required. 
and you can run these pseudo auto remove that'll remove those packages right there so we're good to go now let's go down and clear right fast because one of the first things we need to do is install flat pack so let's run sudo apps install and this is only if you don't have it on there i'm gonna just run it just to make sure it's on there but flat pack and then dash y and this will install it and as you can see it's not on there it's gonna go through and install it on our system okay so flat pack is installed now one other thing i wanted to show you guys let's go back to the website for carburetor so if we go down to the bottom this will take you to the github page if you see down here at the bottom it says git repository for carburetor click here so click there that'll take you to their git repository and if you scroll down here this will walk you through how to install it it'll also show you the package status depending on what system you're using if you're using orch you can install it using the aur but what you want to do is enable the repository first so that's the command you want to run as and so i'm gonna just copy and paste it over to my system and you have to use sudo switch back over and type sudo and i forgot to switch back over to my system but yeah there we go so sudo that's going to enable our repository for flatback and so let's go on and clear right fast just to bring it back up to the top and if you remember back on the website it gives you the link to actually install it right there you see tractor flatpak install flat hub and then io framer tractor dot carburetor so all you got to do is copy that put that in there and that'll install a carburetor for you on the system let's go back to our desktop right fast and we can paste it in there and we can run it and that should install it on our system and just answer the questions do you want to install this we're gonna put yes and then proceed with the changes as you can see it's going to install 11 packages so i went through 11 and it's going to install all of those you'll see them get the check mark after a while it's going to install them one at a time so you'll see the check mark start going through and then once you get all the check marks for each one of the packages it's finished so I'll let this run and I'll come back when it finishes. So that's it. No compiling, no dependency hell. Flat packs just basically wrap everything up you need and install it. So you get to go. Now you can launch it from the terminal using what is it? Flat pack run. And then you have to specify the name. What is it? IO dot whatever. There we go. So that's it. I just tabbed it out, but that will launch the application. I don't like to do that, especially when I have a desktop environment. But you could just find it under your applications it should be there where is the application oh oh i forgot we had to we have to log out and log back in uh, and actually we we're supposed to do that or actually reboot so let me cancel and that was supposed to be done before we installed but it looks like it found the packages so we get to go when i enabled that repository i was supposed to reboot then but totally forgot but it looks like it didn't mess it up because it went ahead and installed it but as soon as you add that repo or enable that repository you're supposed to log out log back in and maybe that's why it didn't show up in the applications menu but i know it's installed yeah there we go so carburetor so that's why it wasn't showing up in our application menu we can click there and that will start carburetor for us as you can see it's a very simple application i'm gonna just make it look like this so you guys can see it a little better one stop shop you got one but and that's the beauty of this application simplicity with power behind it now let's actually connect to the tour network all you have to do is hit connect and you'll see it go through the process of connecting it'll find relays loading the authorization keys all that good stuff to connect to tour and as you can see it says we are running and so it shows you all your ports so you got your socks port 9052 dns port 9053 http port 9080 and essentially it starts up the local tour daemon and create a socks 5 proxy running on your local machine by default that's at what is it 127.0.0.1 and then your port your socks port so 9052 that's basically your personal encrypted tunnel to the tour network and you can just check your connection and it says your connection is secure and then also one thing i wanted to show you guys if you go under information this will show you the full connection right here in the logs you can copy this if you're troubleshooting all that good stuff you can check out the logs for it now there is the main menu just show you guys you can go through and make some changes if you need to as far as preferences goes now one thing you want to do is set a proxy this is the easy way of getting this thing set up 
If you set proxy, that will enable your connection for everything on your system. But let's say you don't want to set it for everything on your system and you just want to set it for one browser or something like that. Then you can go in and modify your settings for that one browser and just use that 127.0.0.1 and then the SOX port and add that in there that way. And you can force all your internet traffic from that browser through that tunnel. But if you turn this on set proxy, that will force everything on your system to go through the tour network. So let me show you guys how to check that we are on the tour network. So let's open up the Firefox right fast. And that's the reason, that's also the reason why I turned that on because otherwise I was gonna have to configure it in Firefox. And I didn't wanna go through the process of doing that. And just so you guys know, the internet will be a little slow because we are going through the tour network. So the way to check though, you can go HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then what is it check.torproject and then dot org and this will allow you to check if you're going through the tour network yeah and there you go congratulations this browser is configured to use tour then you want to go through and make changes in here turn off certain things like javascript and all that stuff make the browser secure all that good stuff because as you can see it says javascript is enabled and you want to secure your browser obviously and then also back over here you guys saw this i'm sure you saw this and i didn't say nothing about it i was gonna say something about it now but you can also force a new identity just like when you had a tour browser you could request a new identity basically get a new ip address a new connection essentially so you just click there and then let's refresh and we should have a different ip address and we are connected through the tour browser still so that's super cool now i wanted to go through and show you guys some of the preferences right fast just show you guys you can set up your exit node if you want to so you can set up a specific country that you wanted to go through there's the country codes you could put in there you can also accept incoming connections this will allow external devices to use your network basically you're setting up your system as a relay enable firewall mode this restricts connections to port 80 and 443 that's cool and then listening ports so socks dns you could change your ports if you need to and then your bridge so you could change the transport type they got a couple of different kinds vanilla obfuscated snowflake conjure and then bridges help you secure access to the tour network in places where tour is blocked so as if you need that open externally and then find more bridges if you need to visit bridge db website to find more and for email exclusively for gmail and then this one is for telegram but that's pretty much it for the preferences in there but you can check out the shortcuts and then also the about so this is version 5.1 and this will tell you what's new you can go to the website credits all that good stuff now before you go full anonymous linux ninja let's talk about a few important things tor has your connection not your identity if you log into personal accounts or post identifying information you're still revealing who you are also use https websites whenever possible that adds another layer of encryption on top of Tor. Now, like I said a little earlier, expect slower speeds. Tor relays your traffic through multiple servers and is also encrypted at each step. So don't expect blazing fast downloads. This is the trade-off for privacy. Also don't mix Tor with VPNs unless you know what you're doing. They can interfere with each other if not configured properly now carbonator runs in a sandbox since it's a flat pack it may request network permissions and that's totally normal just make sure you grant what's needed for it to work properly and also make sure you use it wisely that's my disclaimer tools like this are meant for privacy and security not illegal activity so stay ethical so that's carbonator a lightweight open source linux tool that helps you stay invisible online with almost zero setup if you've ever wanted system-wide tour privacy without editing configuration files or installing obscure daemons this is honestly one of the easiest ways to do it go on and try it out on your system and let me know in the comments did it work smoothly for you are you using any other privacy tools along side tour I love to hear your setup. Don't forget, if this video helped you, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to keep it techie, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future Linux tutorials. And remember, my whole goal is to help you build your skills and take control of your tech one command at a time. Thanks for watching, and as always, 
keep learning and keep it tech. Yo, what's up y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's going to take effort. You'll have to grind. But think about this, the time is gonna pass anyway, so why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills, it opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech. Wow.